We are looking this morning at Matthew chapter 13 and reading verse 13. Matthew chapter 13 and reading verse 13. I am going to use the New International Version at this time to read this text. Chapter 13, reading verse 13. What does the Bible say? This is why I speak to them in parables. This is Christ responding to the questions of his disciples because at all times when he was speaking to the people, he was speaking in parables. And now they started wondering, Lord, why don't you just speak directly to them like you do to us? But all the time you speak in parables. Why? And then Jesus answers and says, this is why I speak in parables. New Intervention Version says, Those seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear. Therefore, the message for this morning is, can you see, can you hear? As you are sitting right now in the church of God, can you see, can you hear? Shall we pray? Our gracious God, we come to you this morning. We invite you, dear God, to come into our midst. We ask you, dear Father, to speak your own way. And we ask you to open our eyes so that we can see. We ask you, dear God, so that you can open our ears when you speak to us this morning. Let us hear, let us listen, and let us understand. May your Holy Spirit dwell among us, and Lord, speak your own way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May I invite you to the book of Daniel chapter 12. Invite you to the book of Daniel chapter 12. And we are going to read verse 1. Daniel chapter 12. And we are going to read verse 1. This is what the Bible says. And at that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as never, uh, such has not happened from the beginning of the nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. I like using King James Version, so I wrote the words here. My eyes are watery because of the allergies, and you can hear my voice. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 in King James Version, the Bible says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never since there was a nation even to the same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that is found written in the book. This is the prophecy that was given to Daniel the prophet. The Lord was trying to explain what is to come in the times of the end. And he spoke to his servant and told him to say, Well, the time of trouble is going to come. And this time of trouble, when it is going to come, it's going to be a time of trouble that has never been ever since there was a nation on this planet Earth. Daniel, I want you to understand that the problems that are going to befall the children of God 
have never existed before. Now, it was beyond Daniel's comprehension. He could not fully comprehend and understand what the angel is talking about. He really did not perceive what the Lord really meant when he was saying what he was saying. And so the Lord said to him in verse 4, bound up the words and close the book until the time of the end. Daniel, don't worry about it. Daniel, don't be troubled about it. Daniel, don't try to understand. But what I am trying to tell you is the time of trouble that is going to come is one that has never existed since there was a nation. Bind them up and close the book until the time of the end. Now you may ask yourself, how do you get to know that this is the time of the end? How are you able to understand that we are living in the times of the end? Every preacher that stands up is saying, the Lord is coming sooner than you think. And so, watch. And so, get prepared. And so, stay alert. And say, stay attentive. And say, watch your relationship between your God and yourself. Watch your relationship between yourself and the other people. What makes them think that this is the time of the end? How are they able to tell that we are living in the times of the end? When we go down chapter 12, verse 4, the Bible clearly speaks and tells Daniel, people will run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. When you see these things, Daniel, simply know that the time of the end is right here. People will run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. <laughs> are your eyes open so that you are able to perceive what is happening right now around you? Are your eyes able to under your ears able to listen and understand what is going on in the world right now? Or you do have your eyes, but you do not see. Things just pass right in front of you, and you have no clue. Do you have your eyes, but you cannot see what is happening and what is, what is going on and perceive and understand the situation like King David did? Do you have your ears, but you cannot hear what is going on in this world just like King David did? When you consider the book of 2 Samuel chapter 11, and chapter 12 you will find that King David was described to have the eyes but he could not perceive God's righteousness one day he stands up and he feels so good and he walks on top on the roof of his house and he is throwing his eyes all over the place and trying to appreciate whatever is in his kingdom and his eyes were focused wrongly on a woman that was having a shower and immediately his desire fell for her but what he could not understand and perceive is that that woman was another man's wife do you have your eyes but you can't see and perceive 
the righteousness of God. King David had the ears to listen and hear what the report was from his servants. When they came back, they told him to say, King David, that is Bathsheba, the wife of your servant, Uriah. But David could not understand that adultery is a sin and its wages is death. Do you have your ears but you can't hear and understand what the Lord is speaking to you on your daily basis? Do you have your ears but not able to listen what is going on in your life. Therefore, the question is, can you see, can you hear? And Jesus speaks in Matthew 13, verse 13. Those seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. Even if they do have their eyes and they see, they only see what they want to see. Even if they have their ears to hear, they don't hear. They have selective hearing. They only hear what they want to hear. Do you have your eyes, dear children of God, in these last days? And your eyes are only seeing things you want to see. Do you have your ears, dear children of God, in these last days? And what you are only going to hear is what you like and what makes you feel comfortable. Can you see? Can you hear? It took God's intervention for King David to see, for King David to hear, for King David to understand, for King David to realize what his situation is. Sometimes we only see what we want to see because that's what we are comfortable with. Sometimes we only hear and listen to the words and listen to the situation because that is what is within our comfort zone. The Lord is saying we are living in the last days. Are your ears open so you can hear are your eyes open so you can see? <laughs> In Mark chapter 8 verse 22. Mark chapter 8 verse 22. And you go to verse 23. There is, I mean to verse 25. There is a story. There is a story. I'm going to read that text. Mark chapter 8 verse 22 going down to verse 25. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit, he, when he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked the man, Do you see anything? Let me tell you, you are not sitting in these pews by mistake. The Lord brought you here. I am not standing here by mistake. The Lord held me by hand and brought me here. Because he knows that we are blind. Even when we have eyes. He knows that we are deaf. Even when we have ears. The Bible says. He took this man by hand. Outside the what? The village. And he put spit. On his face. And asked him. 
Can you see anything? Listen to the answer. Verse 24. He looked up and said, I see people, they look like trees walking around. Oh. I see people walking like trees and moving around. Verse 25. Once more, when Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes, the eyes were opened. His sight was restored. And he saw everything clearly. <laughs> Ordinary vision, my dear friends, provides nothing but blared vision. The eyes that we do have right now, they provide nothing to us but only blared vision. And what these eyes do, they see things that are already normal to be abnormal. I see people upside down moving like what? Like trees. Ordinary vision is all blared, my dear saints. And it will make things that are perfectly well to look wrong. You look at your wife with your ordinary eyes. She looks all wrong. You want to swap. You look at your husband with your ordinary eyes. He looks all wrong. You want to swap ordinary eyes you look at the church with everything the church is going through you look at the leadership with everything the leadership is going through ordinary eyes will see normal things upside down verse 25 Jesus touched him again there is a reason why Jesus did not him right away. It doesn't mean that the, the miracle that Jesus was doing was above his power, that it needed his second touch to make a change. Spiritual things, my dear saints, are spiritually discerned. Spiritual things, when they come to you sometimes, it is not easy to understand them. You need a second touch from the Lord. And therefore, my dear saints, can you see? Can you hear? We do need a second touch of Christ in our eyes so that we can be able to discern and perceive the spiritual things that are going on around us. How about our ears? Yes, we need the touch of Christ for us to understand the spiritual things that are going on in this world for us to tell the times of the end. Can you see? Can you hear? And it is for this reason when God is speaking to Daniel, he tells him to say, well, seal up the words and close the book. Until the time of the end. And the question was, how would you tell and know that this is the time of the end? And the Bible says, people will run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. What is God talking about here? He is talking about the communication and transportation technology. Are you there with me? Transportation and communication technology. <laughs> Where it used to take three weeks to go, you only take hours. If you want, if you've got, if you've got money, you can have breakfast in Dallas and have lunch in where? In, some, in San Francisco or New York. Right now. In those days, it was not going to happen. In these days, it is so simple. Where it used to take several months to go, it is only taking hours and you are there. What does that suggest to you? It simply means sin can move from one point to another point in a flash. In 2007, the World Health Organization 
made a statement in their annual report for their health report and they indicated and said paraphrased they said outbreak or epidemic in one part of the world can easily threaten billions of people in other parts of the world due to the large numbers of modern day air travel oh oh oh, oh. what happened just few months ago their statement became true and validated when Ebola knocked at the door of the United States right here in Dallas, Texas. In a split like that. And the entire world, the entire Western world that had folded their hands to hear what is going to happen right down there in Africa because Ebola is eating them up. Did they sit idle? They all got up and flew down to arrest the situation right where it started from. Because they knew with the large increase in transport communication, the entire world was being threatened in one single epidemic. Knowledge shall increase. People will run to and fro. How about knowledge? My wife got lost. Sorry, Marjorie. <laughs> she tried to use the new highway to go to Fort Worth. And so she was like, well, she calls me and she says, well, I'm going to have fun in the highway. I'm like, okay, have fun. She doesn't get lost in that highway, but my wife got lost. <laughs> and now what did she do? She exited at the wrong place. And when she exited, she did not know where she ended up. So she started to round about, round about, round about. She became so confused that she, doesn't even, she didn't even know how to get back to the highway to come back home. <laughs> I tell you. Now, because the entire world has been shrunk to the palm of the hand, she just pulled her phone and said, Google, I am lost. Can you take me to Seminary Drive, please? And Google says, activating navigation. Navigating to Seminary, to seminary what? Drive. And my wife sits the phone in front of her dashboard and starts following the prompts from the what? From the phone. And when she's driving, she realizes, okay, she comes behind a mall there where she shops every time. And she recognizes the buildings even before she reaches Seminary Drive. She says, oh, now I know where I'm going. Knowledge shall increase. I am a traveler. I go all over the place. I've been to all 48 states in the United States. Sometimes my GPS and that little girlfriend of mine, Michelle, my wife calls her Michelle as my little girlfriend on the GPS. <laughs> Sometimes she takes me where I do not want to go. <laughs> and you arrive in the middle of nowhere, there are trees here and trees here and says you have arrived at your destination on the right. <laughs> this is not where I am going. And now I become confused, I don't even know where to go. I used to have headaches. When my wife told me about that and she said, oh, there's an app on Google, you can just download it. I went ahead and downloaded it. Guess what? When Michelle says, a boyfriend, you have arrived here on the right and there's nothing, I just say, Google, I need your help. Take me to address in so and so and so and says, okay, navigating to address in so and so and so and takes me right to where I need to be. Knowledge shall increase in the last days and people shall move to and from. And when this happens, simply know that the times of the end are right here knocking at your door. My dear saints, if you want to talk about social network. Social network is just something else. One time, our phones were shut down. My wife had 
phone, my phone, and yet she was just sitting on <laughs> the Facebook and this and that, and so all the data is gone. And I'm like, Major, what happened? You know, family bundles. What happened? I'm checking it out right there. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? The whole world is just in the palms of the what? Of the hand. My wife the other day showed me a video. When she showed me a video, only 400,000 people had seen that video. Guess how many people had viewed that video in one hour time? 7.8 million when I went back to check. Oh, 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 oh. What does that suggest? Anything you put on social media, even people you do not want to see, they're going to see it. Even someone who lives in a remote area of Africa or another remote area of India or anywhere is going to be able to see it. In a split of a second, knowledge shall increase. But the question is, can you see, can you hear? Bound up the words, seal up the book, until the time of the end. Are you able to see that you are living in the times of the end? Are you able to hear that the things going around are telling you that you are actually living in the times of the end? This is what the spirit of prophecy says. We are living in the time of the end. The first fulfilling signs of the times declare that the coming of Christ is near at hand. The days in which we live are solemn and important. The spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the earth. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of the grace of God. The calamities by land and by sea and settled state of society, the alarms of wars are amazing. They focused approaching events of the greatest magnitude. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. I want you to mark those words. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. What is going on here? They do have you and me as a target. It is you and me as a focus. Because what is going on in this world is so hard that you as a Christian, it's going to be so difficult to pull through. So the forces of evil are consolidating and having you and me as a target. They are strengthening for the great last crisis. Great changes, listen to this, are soon to take place in our world and the final movements will be rapid ones. We are in the close of time. The great changes are going to be rapid ones. Several things are going on to make your Christian life difficult. Several laws are being passed just to make sure your functionality is not absolute. A lot of things are going on that are going to make the church of God so, find it so hard to function in these modern days. Because this is a culturally motivated world now. And its direction is being depicted and focused by its own culture and the so-called the new culture. The law of God is also being altered because the culture is telling you that. Now the question is, can you see? Can you hear? Where are you heading to your morality in these days will be tested to the latter extent spiritualism is going to take its shape and the demonic the demonic power is going to envelop and cover its victims those that are pushed in the corner and audibly speaking to them and presenting themselves like they are gods. 
the word that the devil spoke to Eve to say you shall not die you continue to live the devil is still keeping on proving himself that his word is true and the message is going on right now with the spiritual realm is that you as a human being you are not just a human being but you are also a God and you cannot die even when you die you don't die you just change form Open your ears so that you can listen and open your eyes so that you can see. Debates are going to arise to find out whether God is a man or a woman. Have you heard about that? Have you heard about some of those guys saying, no, actually God is a woman. Strange doctrines are going to come up. Simply know that you are living in the times of what? Of the end. <laughs> Even if so many things are going to be difficult for you to deal with. Finally, dear saints, whether you like it or not, the Sabbath is going to be the point of controversy between the church and the world. And now the test of time comes. The time of trouble is going to appear at this point. Which has never been since there was a nation. You're going to be tortured and beaten because of your faith. Some of us are going to be killed because we have taken a stand of what God has said in his word. And many of us, our homes are going to be grabbed away from us. And we shall be fleeing into the deserts and into the bushes. We're going to feel like we do not have protection. But let me tell you one thing. Daniel chapter 12 verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which stands for the children of thy people. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone whose name is found written in the book. Can you see? Can you hear? Do you understand that when the devil has the time and the power to disturb you and to make your life difficult? John chapter 14 verse 1 to 3. The Lord also has an alternative for you. He has gone to prepare a place for you. And in his place I mean rooms just for you. At the time when you're going to be running to and fro because you have no home. Because of your stand on, on the truth and in the Lord. You will have no food, no clothes. Do you know that the caves God has prepared to be the palaces for them that are rich in the faith? Do you know that God is going to command the ravens of the air to bring you water and food like in the days of Elijah? Do you know that the fight is not going to be yours? It's going to be the fight of God. All the Lord wants you to know is that your eyes need to be opened so that you can see what is around you. Your ears must be opened so that you can hear and understand the times in which you are living. When you open your television, what do you see? When you sit around some people where you are, what do you see and what do you hear? When you come into the church of God and God is speaking, what do you see and what do you hear? We are living, dear saints, in the time of the end and the troublous times are right here at hand. What we do need are our spiritual eyes so that we can be able to understand and see the spiritual things the Lord is telling us. We are supposed to have our spiritual ears so that we can be able to hear and understand what the Lord is saying concerning our salvation. Because if we do not have our spiritual eyes and we do not have our spiritual ears, we are going to drift away with this world without knowing and miss our eternity. You would be seated in this church and thinking you are alright. 
yet you are wrong. You'd be seated in this church and thinking what you are doing and your situation is all right. Not knowing you are heading to eternal doom. And the Lord says, wake up. Wake up. You need to receive spiritual eyes so you can see spiritual things. Wake up. You need to receive your spiritual ears so that you can hear and understand my messages that are directing you to eternity. The question is, can you see? Can you hear? Those seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear. Those are not the words the Lord needs to speak to you. Those are the words the Lord needs to speak to them that are in the world. Yes. Verse 16. Blessed are your eyes because they see. And your ears because they hear. You are sitting in here right now because the Lord is speaking and is inviting you to open your ears so you can hear. He's inviting you to open your eyes so that you can see. He's inviting you to his rim so that he can take you to eternity. And he's inviting you to open your ears so that you can know that even when the troublous times are right at hand, the fight is not yours. The fight is God's. Amen. Now he's going to stand only for those whose names are written in the book of life. My desire is that my eyes be opened so I can see. My desire is that my ears be opened so that I can hear God's plan concerning my salvation. My desire is to tell the Lord to say, Lord, I have to hand over myself before you because you are coming sooner than I think. I want you to take over my life. Amen. Get your bulletin and look at the back at the meditation. Selected Messages Book 1 by Ellen White Chapter 6, page 79 and paragraph 2. These are the closing words. We know not what is about we know not what is before us and our only safety is in walking with Christ our hand in his our hearts filled with perfect trust has he not said let me take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me and he shall make peace uh, he shall make peace with me let us keep close to the Savior. Let us walk humbly with him. Filled with his meekness. Mark the word. Let self be hid with him in God. Amen. It is total surrender my dear saints. Otherwise the world is going to drift with you. And you will know it. You will not know it. The question is. As you get out of here this morning, can you see? Can you hear? May God bless you.